Hello, motherfuckers! This is Matthew John Smith, and you are listening to another episode of your favorite podcast, Love, Forgiveness, and a Little Bit of Taint. Today we have a very special episode where we talk to my good friend Uriel Grossel of the band Against Nature. Call him Yuri for short. Today we're going to discuss topics with Yuri such as the mental prison, why pooping hurts so much, and music. And Yuri's going to play us a little bit of music from his Against Nature band project thing. Without further ado, let's begin the Shepard's Yard. Okay, who are you? Matthew. So you, is that your name? All right, uh, well, welcome to my podcast. Um, uh, this is the Against Nature podcast. You know, this is my podcast, obviously. Um, okay. I All made right. it. I'm really happy yeah. to be a guest on your show. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. No. This this is really you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes. It's a joint, don't worry. Oh, oh. Even worse. Well, well, you know, I mean, I've been working real hard on this podcast three whole episodes. Um I haven't been in any of them, so it's a little weird, but uh welcome to my podcast. Right. Right. Right, right. Well, you know, I'm just trying to get the the ground running for you. So, um my band against nature Look, I, I, I've been uh, playing in this band for Against Nature for about seven years now. And, uh, you Jesus know. Christ. You've you know, gone nowhere real quick, huh? Yeah, we've gone nowhere real fast. But uh, must, all the You sudden, guys must fucking suck. We're okay, man. Out of nowhere. I mean, out of seven nowhere. Seven years, man. Seven years and nobody cares then. I mean, shit. That's I, enough time for people to either care or not care. I mean, mostly as against nature, I played by myself on a Casio keyboard in alleys behind uh, liquor stores. Is that different than playing with yourself or? I... Uh, it's a little bit different than that. I mean, like sometimes, okay. sometimes they happen simultaneously. Wow. So that's a skill unto itself. Actually. Yeah. The ability to play the, the keyboard. So I want to know why against nature, why this band I'm in suddenly had this moment of inspiration. Uh, uh, I don't know what the fuck that was. I'm sorry. <sighs> Wait, what do you want to know? This is my podcast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I'm on it, it's mine. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, it. So, okay. So you're Yuri and you no. are. Yes, yes. No, yes, I am. No, yes, you are. Yes, I am, no. And, um... I might be. You might be. It's classified. It's, cl- it's classified. But as of right now, you're uh, making music under the band name Against Nature. And just- yes, but this is my podcast. This is my, uh... This is my podcast. I haven't named it yet, but I've done three of them that I haven't been on. Three or two? Well, you've done two that you haven't been on. Yeah, that's weird. You know, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Follow. I've been following it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I'm subscribed to myself on SoundCloud. I'm following myself on SoundCloud, I think. Yeah. 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 It's, it's great. I'm my only follower. It happens like that, man. I don't want anyone else to follow me. I hide it. I hide it so they can't follow me because I'm black metal. So. Well, yeah. You know. Only, only the initiated can yeah. ever reach it. We basically play shows that are secret and, um, you know, wait, who's playing the shows? I'm so confused right now. <laughs> okay. Do it. Okay. So let's take a deep breath. I did, except that there was nicotine in it, so it doesn't count. Right. Oh, God. What's happening to me? So, like, remember that time I, um, I ate way too many psychedelics? That time, as if there was only one. Yeah, but that one time. Oh, the one time where you were like, uh, basically, um, not a person for like three days. Yeah. And yeah, I I can't forget that. No, yeah. I mean, I was I wasn't really in the the experience of uh, for you know I wasn't in your presence during it. But you got so, to hear you got to hear the the aftermath. I, I did hear, unfortunately, about your uh, uh, permanent scarring. Yes. 
Yeah. Well, you know, I was changed. I don't know if I would call it scarred, but you know, I was changed. But, traumatized in right, a sense. Oh, a little, a little traumatized. Um, right before that, you, uh, you, you knew what I was about to do. You saw me with, uh, my excess and you were like, uh, by the way, uh, why don't you, uh, if anyone tells you to quit smoking, just go ahead and keep smoking if you got to. <laughs> I you, said that to you. Yeah, you you, you were you, you're the that basic. Sounds like some, that sounds like something I would say. I, I'm paraphrasing, but you, the basic gist was like, hey, sometimes when everything is falling the fuck apart, the only anchor you're ever gonna have is that goddamn cigarette. And oh some, yeah. Yep, sometimes yep. it's between you, death, and that fucking cigarette. I and, once uh, was alive just for a cigarette. That's why I told you to do that. That's it's uh, when I wanted to die real bad, and I gave all my money away. I was on lots of bad drugs, and uh, someone was like, you know, uh, I, I I was giving all these fucking tweakers my money because uh, fuck everything. I didn't want any of it. Fuck fuck everything. Fuck the world. And uh, right, they're like, well, what do you want? Do you want this or that? And I was like, can I have the cigarette? And then the cigarette, like, kept me here. It was so grounding. When you're in such a dark place, tobacco can be, like, the only thing that matters in that moment. And it was. And so I just passed that information along to you. And now you're going to tell me apparently it was relevant. Yeah, it was relevant. I mean, what's funny is during that trip, which was epic, by the way, um, I kept smoking cigarettes that weren't even there. <laughs> I mean, like I was literally smoking something and it was, Jesus I could see it. Christ. I could see it. I could feel it in my hands and I was smoking it. And my friends would put a, <laughs> they would put a real cigarette into my fingers and it would, <laughs> it, it would feel fat and cartoony and unreal. You manifested cigarettes. Well, I also manifested a, a case of beer and a hundred dollars out of nowhere. by I never there. use that word again. Man, yeah, it's the tr most trashy word of the 20th century. Yeah, it, to it, Gene, where everything is manifested, nothing matters. What? Well, oh, okay, moving on, moving on. It is, it is a tainted word. I'd rather talk about that word than ignore it. Oh God, it's a tainted oh, word, God. right? Yeah, it's been ruined. It, I, nobody I, understands it. Nobody understands what it what it means to manifest something because it's not conscious. You fucking retard. I no, I. I I'm not going to use that as an insult because, again, I, I enjoy, quote, unquote, retarded people a lot more than most normal people because they're less, quote, retarded. They're yeah. Right. Yeah. Done quoted. Yeah. I agree with that statement. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's wow. uh, it, it's a tragedy. It is. It's, okay. This whole, the, this the New Age movement. We're talking about the New Age movement. That's, uh, it's, yeah, it's a fucking tragedy. Well, to take the, the, whole, the whole thing of taking the concept of manifestation. And what it truly is, because what it truly is, is very beautiful and very reflective of, like, where you really are in the world. Right. Um, you're just not in control of you manifest, even though not, you like to believe not, it. Not Set not yourself up to believe your own lies. And so, yeah, the New Age movement of manifestation, the movement of the secret, is this whole thing. Right. It's just this big positive thinking movement where it's How like, to open yourself up to demons the most effective way. Mm-hmm. 101. And when you're, when you're only focusing, when you're trying to manifest only things for external success, you're really missing the point. You should be trying to manifest a relationship with yourself and then through that, a better relationship with everyone else. Right, you, you can't use the word manifest on it then though, because the whole manifest fucking bullshit is like, you know, you're, you're making it. I mean, it's like, like I agree with your use of it, but it, but you know, it's been so tainted now that it's just, it can't be even used in the proper way anymore. So it's, it's just not, it's a, it's a pretty bad subject all in all. It's kind of like the word God. Yeah. 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 You know, cause God. I can't, I, I can have my own conception of God and what I mean by that word, but it's such a heavy and tainted word that when I say it, it doesn't matter what I mean. You're going to hear what you hear. Exactly. Yeah. You're, uh, it's like the, the, the misperception of negativity, something that, that might be so negative for someone, for one person who's, who's uh, listening or 
receiving their 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 channels tuned into a certain frequency and so they they so commonly will misperceive something sad as something negative because you know uh bad emotions or uh bad feelings bad uh, they they connotate a wrongness right. to them right and so you know, it really actually came up yesterday in some uh, comments in uh, the, you know, Dimitri, the psychologist that I <clears throat> closely follow. Um, he he uh, he tagged me in uh, some post or whatever, and it was like, you know, some client that he was speaking to said, uh, you know, he apologized for a bad word, quote, bad word that he had said during a session, and, and Dimitri's response was, uh, well, you know, it's good that we have bad words and we all kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> so how bad are those words, right? But the same thing, and then it came up in the comments about, like, you know, negativity, perceived negativity. I said, and there was there was another one, too, where I said, you know, this is why my music is so, quote, negative is because it's, I, I can't, I can't reference it exactly. But the point is, so many people with the, with my music in particular, I uh, have been unable to listen to the songs because they were just so negative. And, you know, they just didn't understand that when I sing these horribly negative, bad, negative songs, I feel fucking great. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like I'm on top of the goddamn world. So tell me just how bad they really are. They're bad for you, you, because you don't want to feel that's not my fucking problem. I yeah, enjoy feeling it's your resistance to those feelings that are causing your own suffering. Exactly. And, but that's not something you can really tell people. You really can't tell them that because they'll just fight you. Well, you can only tell people who are ready to hear it really. Yeah. And at that point you don't have to tell them either. because They already know. Well, okay. So for ex example, I sort of already know, you know, that I mean that I got to feel those bad things and that I got to through that. There's going to be some sort of, peace to just be right. whole and not fighting myself and even though i know that it's really helpful for me for example i like to listen to uh the duncan trussell family hour and i've heard of that podcast but it's actually one i've been meaning to listen to yeah it's really good he uh a good place to start with him is uh he's a guest on joe rogan all the time right that's and, where i've heard of him and him and joe rogan talking is like a an explosion it's fantastic like they just go and it's it's amazing um, but I really appreciate being able to listen to, to like, you know, I wake up in the morning, I turn on the podcast and Duncan's talking to uh, some Buddhist teacher and they're oh, talking, but, and they're talking about rec <laughs> recognizing your pain, letting it be, not trying to judge it. It's like, but, but these you know, the problem I have with the Buddhists, well, that they're Buddhists. Exactly. They're fucking <laughs> religious. Yeah. They're not really, they're not really figuring things out for themselves. I mean, like they kind of got the right message, but they had the potential to fuck it up even worse because that, you know, if you got mostly the right message intermixed with some bullshit, it becomes more dangerous than the wrong message. Yeah. Just like Jesus. That is just like any religion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that brings me to, to my riddle of the hour, which is. One that you can answer, but I'm sure one that your your viewers probably won't pick up on because none of the world fucking knows it, which is, you know, what is the most dangerous form of religion? Don't say it. I asked this at shows, and this is a, you know, I offered to buy people a drink if they could get the answer right. No, so, I'll buy you any drink in the bar if you can get the answer right, but they never get it, and that's the whole point, so I don't ever have to buy anyone because I don't have any money to buy them fucking drinks anyways, so it's safe. Oh, yeah, and by the way, quiz. the viewers that don't exist, do not forget to donate to both Against Nature and the Love, Taint, and a Little Bit of Forgiveness podcast. I said that wrong, but I don't care. Wait a minute. There's donations to this? I'll, I, can I have them all? Well, I mean, no. Bitcoin link in bio. What? No, I don't know. <laughs> right now, basically, this is the truth about what I'm doing right now. I'm going to create a season's worth of podcasts. And release them all at once, essentially. Uh, so you're because, gonna take a big crap on people all at once, like diarrhea explosion. Yeah, and then ju just to get used to doing it. So this is like the demo. It's gonna be like a pilot season of podcasts. And then um, once I get more in the swing of doing it all the time, 
I'll kind of make a schedule out of it and, you know, start to release a podcast every two weeks or every like week, you know, I, it'll be kind of however it happens. You're going to, you're going to need content that's different because there's 8 billion podcasts out there now. I mean, there, there's, I, I agree with what you're saying that I need uh, content that's different, but also I can only do what I do. And at the end of the day, who is uh stay away from him whoever the potentially dangerous person is stay Happy away year. from him <laughs> oh there's so many things wrong with everything it's great with everything oh yeah oh yeah well, mostly yeah mostly uh all of it if i had to if i had to, to pick out uh, uh which parts were fucked up yeah that'd be all of it I'm going to go, um, there's this philosopher whose name I can't remember. So basically an anonymous source said something to the effect of, uh, an early stage of enlightenment, but just a very, very early stage of it is, uh, to be able to recognize the prison clearly and concisely. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Wait, and wait. like, oh, that's an early stage of enlightenment. Sure. Yeah. Right. Right. Really? Because you have to know your, uh, what um you have to know the lie to see the truth yeah and the way the guy said it see i can't even remember who said it but the way the guy said it was uh you know this is the baby steps of you know figuring out what to do you have to be able to see it and uh that's the only thing i know that i can do really well i can see that fucking prison just as clear as day well you know what would you uh describe uh the, the full actualization of the mental prison in which we reside. Uh, well, I guess you'd have to also accept that first, there was probably a mental prison that we did reside in, but, um, I guess we would be speaking to those people that already, um, have recognized that. What would you, do you have a way that you would actually describe this viscerally, uh, succinctly? How would you, how would you put it? Man, that, that's a good question. You don't have the answer. It's all right because I do. I was just uh, seeing that what your fears be a little different. I want. I want you. I want you to go first. Uh, I have it's not really my answer. I'm going to reference the psychologist again. You know, uh, Dimitri. Um, right. Yeah, Dimitri Halley. Well, give yeah. a shout out to Mr. Halley. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, he's a Jungian psychologist. Um, yeah, you know. I follow him too. He's he's all right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm a I'm a little more of a follower than most people are, but um, yeah, I mean, it was put very succinctly the other day in one of his posts um and it was that the mental prison is believing your projections as real oh that's really succinct that is that is pretty much on the on the mark yeah so i mean once you're doing that you know which is what most of us are doing most of the time automatic yeah, then you're in full reactivity mode and you're just um you just become a victim of your own unconscious bullshit and it's pretty it's pretty ugly and violent at that point, so to speak. Metaphorically speaking, violence. It, it doesn't always show itself as physical violence, but it's emotional. Right, no, violence is so much more than physical though. If, yeah, if absolutely. We, if we're honest about it. Yeah. But uh yeah, you know. Um, I think this would probably be good. Um, probably another place to cut just for a second, just because I need to gather my thoughts. Me too. I think I need to grab another beer and, and uh, roll another spliff anyway. Do it. So give me about two minutes, maybe. I think I can do that. All right. <laughs> And now, a brief word from our sponsor. Are you feeling things? Are you worried about the fact that you're feeling things and that it's out of control because you're feeling things? It's not good. Do you know that your feelings are wrong and bad? All of them are out of place, being as that you feel them. That's well, okay. We've got the answer for you. Just talk to your local doctor. They'll get rid of all your feelings with Zoloft. Up to 400 milligrams a day. We'll make the feelings go away. Talk to your doctor about feelings today. They know just what to say. 
Make the feelings go away. Take Zoloft every day. No more feelings bothering you. This commercial is really askew. I might feel. Don't feel. Brought to you by Zoloft. Zoloft. Put it in your butt. So, young sir, what is your name? Wait, that's how you're going to do it? That's terrible. <laughs> you're fired at this podcast. Listen. I thought it was a podcast guest, not a not a schlock, schlock cast guest. No, crap cast, sir. <laughs> this is a crap cast. This is not a podcast. You're not this is a, yes, that, that is my genre. <laughs> my genre. Is crap cast. Crap You are listening to the sweet dulcet tones of one Yori playing guitar. He is one of the founding members of a band called Against Nature. He would like to play you a song. Isn't that correct, Yuri? I don't know what's going on. That's nice. That is some nice intimate recordings of unheard material. I know. I'm waiting for the introduction. And I was talking while you did that. I gave you a beautiful let's introduction. Just fight. Let's just fight on the podcast. I did that. Let's fight. Listen. Let's hello, fight. sir. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Listen. Cl- Clashion. Clashion. That was Jinx. You owe me a Coke. Okay. You are a person whose name is Yuri. And you perform in a band called Against Nature. Would you like to play us a song? No. Why? Well, then don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we play like uh, some music and stuff, and it sucks. Basically, it's like well, uh, I mean, most of it's really depressing. It's about suicide, and dying, and the whole thing is like seeing suicide as a negative thing, and suicidal feelings as a negative thing is a really, really, really incorrect view of them, you know? Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah, it wants to come in. Hold on. I think. It wants to come in or out. But yeah, you know, suicide is not, uh, suicidal feelings are not negative. Oh, hello. Good kitty. Wow. That'd be Sasha. She She doesn't also, she also thinks that suicidal feelings are not negative.
Listening to WCXUAK. This has been a special guest performance by Against Nature frontman Yuri. Had that. Shams Piora. Shams Piora. You're getting a new Shams Pewter? I got a new Shams Pewter, Shams Piora. Just chugging. Yes, eh? Okay, so the final part of the Piercas, I think, should There's no final part of the Piercas. The Piercas is young, and it's never going to end. We're going to do like 15,000 episodes. This is never going to end. It's going to be a win long Piercas. There's going to be 17,000 hours. You don't care what your sex is. I'll make you do it. Thousand. Seven. Thousand hours. Thousand hours. Thousand hours. A thousand hours, a thousand hours, thousand million, one thousand hours podcasting all the time. Yeah, we're fucking podcasting, 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 podcasting all the time. Just podcasting, podcasting. You just a thousand hours. You just podcast, you podcast, you podcast. One thousand hours, you podcast. This whole music here, you're gonna get you sued. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, brother. Huh? I got this oh, music for I you. Stumbled, huh? I stumbled across James Hetfield with an acoustic guitar the other night on YouTube. And I was like, God, this is going to be bad. Guess what? It was. Do, does I Am the Table still exist? I Am the Table. <laughs> that oh, shit is crazy. Yeah, dude. Ten hours. Ten and a half hours of I Am the Table. Uh, anyone who doesn't know needs to look up James Hetfield. I am the table for if 10 If you hours. want to torture your friends and you're at a party, you can hide the the thing playing the music, wherever it is. Like you can Bluetooth it so people can't turn it off. But just put on 10 hours of I am the table. Table. And you'll see what we're talking about. The cat That's even it. objects to it. The cat is upset about it. The cat, the cat knows what's up. Wow. Well, She's, like, pissed that I'm even talking about it. Yeah. How dare you fucking bring up that, that horrible oh, agglomeration. Oh, and the table. Lou Reed and Metallica. Well, good thing he's dead. Which one? Oh, uh, I wish both. But, um, Lou Reed. No, no, we might leave some of this anyway. Oh, God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, mean, I would prefer it to be a little more cohesive. I, I will More digestible, you know, me being the perfectionist that I am and all that. Well, you know, I'm sort of aiming for like the Eric Andre show meets like Joe Rogan, right? Well, I mean, yeah, you can aim wherever you want. Doesn't mean you're going to hit the target. Tell that to the people that piss in the urinal at my work. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> See, now I can't, I can't cut that. That was gold right there. There's I got actually keep... a sign. There's actually a sign with like Charles Bronson that says, Please aim, and he's pointing his finger at you above the urinal because it's that <laughs> fucking bad. I swear oh. to God, that's so, the trash hole I work at, and we're not going to talk about it because it's, it's humiliating. Anyways, um, so that exists. There you go. 
exactly. And so thanks for having uh, me on the the tainted acceptance of love's podcast. Tainted acceptance of love. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So you can you can you can throw your name all around in different ways. It still works. The love, but first forgiveness taint. Now thereafter. <laughs> oh God, no! But yeah, have, we'll have to get you to catch your name eventually. I know. Uh, we'll work on it. I don't. I don't fucking know. I mean, like, I'm all for it, but at the same time, if you came up with like a a better like, you take Something like shorter. one letter out of each, like to spell a more catchy word or whatever that that stands. If you're gonna have a big long name, you gotta you gotta like have each letter in the thing stand for something that's more catchy. L F ampersand T. Jesus fucking Christ, you're not good at this part of things. L F F ampersand T. Naming things. Oh, my website's gonna be monkey suck dick for money dot com. Monkey that's sucks his gonna... own dick for Bitcoin.com. Oh, monkey sucks his own dick for Bitcoin.com. Yes, that that's the that's the <laughs> website. And for some reason, that's where you find my podcast exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Jesus. That's fucking horrible. All right, man. I'll see you. You can message me if you want. I'll be just playing Overwatch with my lady. Okay. All right. Get the hell out of here. All right. See ya. Bye. Yeah, and that was another episode of Love, Forgiveness, and a Little Bit of Taint. What do you got to say about that? Thank you.